Hi, Sheila here. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this cute coloring stocking for Christmas. Uh, you can use your own fabrics and draw your own design and just use this technique to make your stocking, but I have this print available in my Spoonflower store. If you're interested, I'll have the links down below. Let's just get started. So this is what the stocking looks like. Um, it's my pattern from Spoonflower on the outside, both sides. And then inside, I've used my own fabric and some batting for the uh, liner. Um, you can hang it this way with the little tab at the top, and there's enough fabric on the this print fabric, fabric for the tab. Or even with the tab where it is, you can cuff it because there's lots of cuffing space there, which that looks super cute, and it would hang, you know, this way. Or you can change your hanging tab to the top if you want it to be cuffed all the time. I also have it in some various colors if you don't want to color it yourself. And again, this is separate fabric that I've used for the liner. The pattern looks like this, and I have various colors that I still need to make up. <laughs> so let me show you what the fat quarter looks like if you get it from Spoonflower. This is the fat quarter. I'm going to keep it sideways for now. And you see you have the front and the back. You have my information on Facebook and sewing instructions here in the center. There's enough space for you to cut your tab out of the top part of the fabric. And there's even a little diagram here at the bottom left for you to follow to put your liner inside of your stocking. So I should probably iron this. Let me go ahead and move all this out of the way, get this ironed, and we'll get started. Oh, what you will need is the fabric from Spoonflower the lining fabric of your choice, some pins, a rotary cutter or scissors, and of course your sewing machine. Optionally, you might want to use some batting. I just use some scrap batting from my quilts because I make a lot of quilts, um, but that's only if you want it to have this puffy look. It doesn't have to. You can do this without any lining if you want to, or with lining and no batting. So it's up to you, but let me get this ironed and I'll be back with you. Okay, so I've got a cursory iron on there. It's good enough for me to keep going here because I have limited time. Um, if you have a piece of batting that is a fat quarter in size, you can just layer all three of your layers together and cut everything out at once. But the scraps that I'm gonna use are only wide enough for one stocking. So I'm gonna cut out the liner and the stocking at the same time, and then I'll use one of those pieces as a template for the batting. So what I'm doing is I am lining up my fabric so that the seam allowances, selvage, <laughs> is on the same side, and then I'm just adjusting it to best take advantage of my fabric underneath. So that's where my selvage ends, and that's where I want my stocking to begin. And then I'm going to check at the top and make sure that I have full coverage at the top. Okay, I'm going to smooth it out. Maybe put a couple pins in there just to hold it in place. And I'm going to use my rotary cutter to cut this out, but if you're more comfortable using um, regular scissors, then please do that. You're not obligated to do this and use any of the steps that I'm using to put this together. This is just a helpful guide to get you started. All right. And for this pattern, you're gonna cut right on the solid black outline. And I'm gonna use my rotary tool. Hopefully it's sharp. I've been using it for paper piecing. If you cut with, um, if you cut paper with your rotary blade, you're gonna have to change it more often because it will dull it. And I've been too lazy to change this blade, so we'll see how that goes. 
All right, so I'm just gonna start right here. Here's another helpful hint. Um, first of all, you wanna keep your hands out of the path of your blade when you're cutting. And then if you are gonna to have to stop a cut, go ahead and cut away from your shape and then start again when you get into it. And that way you don't inadvertently cut into your shape. But also if you're not feeling very confident with cutting without, with your fingers there, use your ruler as a barrier and just rotate your ruler around, keeping it inside of the black outline. So you basically wanna split this black outline in half. Oh, got a pin right there, gotta get around the pin, so let me stop my blade. All right, so that's that side. That's a nice cut, right? Um, let's cut on this side before I rotate my fabric. And I'm just gonna rotate my ruler so that the spot where the blade is is bisecting that black outline. Now, using this method, if you wanna cut your piece a little bigger, then just put your mark, you'll have to keep their cutting edge to the outside, but let's say you wanna add a quarter inch seam allowance so that you can stitch right on the black line instead of having that be your seam allowance edge. Just put your quarter inch mark on the line as you cut and keep the quarter inch mark on the line as you cut and that'll give you a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around without you having to draw anything or anything like that. All right, let's continue. I'm gonna cut as much as I can without having to rotate my piece. Just for simplicity's sake. We're just rotating around. Now we've met up with that cut. All right, that's pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and get on this other one while I'm down here. How much can I get here? And I I'm gonna stop moving my blade, but leave it in place if I gotta get around a pin. And your ruler should not be chasing your blade. Your ruler should always be ahead of your blade. blade is just riding up against the edge of the ruler. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry about that. That's my iron saying she's gonna cut off. All right, so I just have a little spot here and a round spot here and my two tops. I'm gonna do these freehand. Moving my ruler around this part is, feels a little weird. All right, so it's mostly freed up. Let's see how we're doing. So we just have the two tops to cut off. I'm gonna remove these pins little tab here and that is for your stocking tab. I don't think I'm going to use the white. I think I'm going to use the liner like I have before but I'm going to go ahead and cut this out to use as a template and or just to bulk up my tab a little bit in my hanger. Maybe. We'll see. So that's all your parts cut out. You may also want to cut your instructions out so that you'll have them handy. And then we can put this in the scrap pile. 
There's a diagram down here as well that um, shows you how to place your, let me go ahead and cut that out. Let me just go ahead and keep that around as well. Shows you how to place your tab. All right. So the next thing we want to do is we want to cut out our batting. <clears throat> And I'm going to cut two of these out at once. And I'm going to use the liner from one side as my template. That way, if I inadvertently cut off a little extra, um, it's not going to affect the outside of the stocking at all. So I'm just going to place this on the batting. And I'm going to cut two pieces out because it's mirrored this way. There we go. So I'm not dealing with all of this. You can set that aside. And I'm just going to freehand cut this so I can do it a little bit faster. have to be perfect because we're going to trim it up after we stitch it. <clears throat> Alright, so there's our batting and we've got two pieces. Now, I like to sew my batting to the front of the, well, I'll say the outside of the stocking. And the reason I like to do that is I might decide that I want to quilt it. So let's get our batting pieces. We'll put those liner pieces up for a minute. I'm going to go ahead and clean any threads off of my batting that you're going to see because this is white. We're going to place this on top like that. Get it all squared up. I'm going to put some pins in it. Doesn't need a lot. And we're going to stitch the batting to the outside of the stocking an eighth of an inch away from the edge. Make sure you get any extraneous pieces of thread and fabric off of there. You want it to be a clean slate underneath because it's white fabric. <clears throat> and you'll be able to see those threads through if through the finished, outside the finished stocking if you leave it there. So I'll meet you at the machine and we'll sew an eighth of an inch around the outside. Sorry about that. I did not record sewing that part. <laughs> After I sewed that eighth inch around the outside, I decided to quilt the batting to the front. So you can see a little bit of the texture it created. Um, I don't always do that, but I just decided to do it for this one. Now I'm gonna sew the tops of the liner to the outside of each side. Make sure that you have it right sides together. And even though you can see a little bit of that batting on the top, the fabric is actually lined up. So I'm just zipping through these two tops, removing my pins as I go, and then we'll go back to the cutting area and get these lined up and pinned.
Okay, so now we have the liner sewn to the outside of each stocking and I'm just gonna finger press toward the liner because that's the way it naturally wants to go with the thickness of the batting being on the other side. We're gonna put these right sides together. And the first pin we're gonna make is where these two pieces of fabric meet. And I'm actually gonna do this. I'm gonna flip the top seam allowance in the opposite direction so that I can nest these two seam allowances and get a really tight joint. It's not the way that it wants to go naturally, but it will help you get a nice, tight, even seam across the top here. So I have one seam going to the left, the other seam going to the right. I'm gonna nest them and squeeze them together as tightly as I can and put a pin across the stitch line. Just like that. That's where I wanna start. The easy pinning is gonna be on the liner side. And with that, I'm just gonna put some pins in that are far enough inside the pocket, well, it is gonna be a pocket, but far enough inside the liner that I don't have to take them out as I'm stitching. And here in the bottom of the foot. Put one in the heel. One right here. And then I'm gonna give myself a pin that's right where I have kind of a straight area to tell me to stop stitching there. And then I'm gonna pick it back up here in the calf of the liner of the stocking about four to five inches apart. I'm gonna put another pin here. So that's the easy pinning. Now we're gonna go back to what I had done before with the more difficult pinning where we're gonna use the two pin method where we find a like piece, preferably at the quarter inch mark. We're gonna stick a pin in a part that's easily identifiable. So here I have a bunch of intersections coming, a bunch of lines coming together, so an intersection. I can match that up with the intersection on the other side of the stocking with my pin straight down. Then I'm gonna take a second pin and pin across what I just lined up. Then I'll take my straight up and down pin out. I'll find another spot. So this is longer than the two and a half inches, two to two and a half inches I was talking about, but there's nothing to match up, really. It's far enough away. So I'm just gonna go to the next mark. Try to get it in at a quarter of an inch. Quarter of an inch from the edge, lined up, straight up and down, and pin across. And I'm just going to work my way around this part of the stocking. I'll put on some music for you, and we'll get ready to sew. Now here I'm showing that I'm gonna sew from that opening that I had in the calf. But looking at my diagram here, I can see that my opening is actually supposed to be at the top of the toe on the liner. So I'm gonna fix that right now. Okay. 
and I'm just going to remove my start stop pins and move them down to the toe. It's that easy. At this point, we're ready to make the tab for the hanger. And I decided to use the liner fabric like I normally do. So I'm just using the piece from the outside fabric as a template to cut my liner piece. And earlier I said that I might use it to bulk up my tab. I actually don't wanna bulk up my tab. It's gonna be four layers thick as it is. And that's gonna be enough of a challenge to get through my machine. Once you have it cut, you just need to fold it in half lengthwise. I like to iron it at this point so that I mark the middle. And then I'm going to fold each of the raw edges in toward that middle line. I'll give it a little heat. And I'll do the other side, also folding it inward toward the middle. I'm not going all the way to the fold, but very close. That way I avoid having like six layers in the middle. Then I fold it back over and stitch over the open side. I fold it in half, stick a little pin in there, and now I'm ready to place it into my stocking. Ta-da! So on the diagram I have it where I have the little tab angled upward, but that may be difficult to do. So if you get it in there just straight, parallel to the uh, top seam, that will be fine. It's still gonna hang the way you need it to hang. So I use the pin to guide that tab in and then I take it out and repin through the stocking. So now I'll be starting my stitch line at the toe and working my way all the way around to my stop pin. Notice that I did back tack you're gonna be turning this whole thing out through that hole. That's about four to five inches. So you wanna reinforce the starting and stopping stitches so that it doesn't come apart. This is sped up a little. I'm not actually sewing this fast. As I approach the top of the stocking, I'm gonna slow down take my pin out, back tack, then I'm going to sew over the tab, back tack again, and then make my way around the rest of the stocking. Once I have that done, I'm going to clip my curves. My first two cuts were at my opening. My, my clips are about half an inch to an inch apart, but um, you decide the way you would like to do it. I feel like I get a good result with this, but you may want to cut notches like these instead of just snips, depending on your results, especially here where the batting is. But again, I just snipped. And it's not a ton of fabric here, so be very careful not to cut through your stitches. I would say the most important parts to get clipped are the toe and the heel. All clipped. Now I'm going to open this up, reach my hand in. I'm going to reach all the way to the toe 
on the opposite side and then I'm going to pull that back through my opening. And this is why you want to have that uh, back tack there just in case it's a little tight you don't want it to come apart and now there's a neat trick to get your seam pressed all the way out um, I learned this from Donna Jordan <laughs> on Jordan fabrics um, you want to press the seam flat and then you'll be able to get a nice crisp curve around the outside. So right now I'm just doing it with my fingers trying to get it all the way to the outside while my iron is heating up. Now I'm going to bring the seam up to where it's flat. I'm not really paying attention to which way the seam allowance goes. I just want to make sure that this is fully open. Look at how those pieces came together. I matched up the pattern very well. I'm proud of myself. <laughs> so I'm just giving that some heat and pressure, making sure that seam is open, and then it will roll right out. See how nicely we kept the shape of our stocking? Once you get up here, it's a little easier. And I'm gonna rotate it around. And then I'm going to move to the inside. You don't need to spend a ton of time on the inside because you're going to be tucking it back into the stocking. But do try to get the seam out. And the reason I have the opening on top of the toe instead of in the calf the way I started is because once you turn the liner in that seam will be very hidden but if you would like to do it on the calf you're welcome to do that or the bottom of the foot just leave yourself a space somewhere in the liner to turn the stocking out so now I'm going to tuck in those two raw ends I'm going to iron them so that they go along with the shape of the stocking. And then I will just take it to the machine and give it a little top stitch. Now somewhere I lost some of my footage so it's going to go from me sewing this opening closed to the finished stocking. Just know that I tuck this liner back inside the stocking and then I give it a press along the top of the stocking and I flip the liner out to form a cuff but you don't have to. It's all done at that point. And there she is, all done. So now you're finished with your stocking and you're all ready to color it. I am too. If you're interested in seeing how I do that, let me know in the comments down below. Like, subscribe, and ring that little bell button if you wanna see what I have coming out in the future. I'm not very consistent, so the bell will be very helpful. <laughs> Um, I do plan on having uh, at least one more Christmas video, then we'll see. I'm going to have more videos, I just don't know what they're about.
If you have some suggestions, leave those down below as well. I hope you have a beautiful day and I'll see you soon.